Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take and make a dragon tail finial. Now I'm simply calling it a dragon tail finial. You can call it whatever you like, a serpent's tail, you can call it really anything you want. It's kind of a form of what they would consider like a reptilian twist or crocodile twist, something like that along those same aesthetics. So make up your own name for it and be creative. But that's what we're going to be working on today. So first we're just going to take and draw out a section about two inches long or 50 millimeters long. You can do this on any size stock. Uh, right now I'm working with a piece of 3 8 inch square mild steel material. So that's nine mil nine and a half mil, just call it 10 mil for you guys across the pond. That's what you're gonna to wanna to take and work with is a piece of 10 mil stock for this type of thing. And you could do this with whatever you want. I mean, you can do it with whatever size material. It doesn't have to be particularly this size material. So we're just starting with a simple draw out like that and we are going to take and leave it square. Because now we're gonna come into the next portion where we will be bringing up a guillotine tool where we're gonna be using butchering dies and we're gonna be butchering in little shoulders into this piece. So we're gonna come here. So I'll get this hot again and I'll be right back with you after I move the camera so you can see better. So now that we have this piece nice and hot, we're gonna come in just from the tip a little bit and we're gonna take a bite on all four sides. So I'm gonna bring this out. We're gonna come in from the tip just a bit. We're gonna take a bite. Then we're gonna turn at 90 and take a bite. Then we're gonna advance it just a little bit, about a quarter of an inch, take a bite, take a bite. Boat as you go, make sure you do it 90 degrees each time. Take a bite, 90 degrees, take a bite. And then we're gonna go up a little further and we're gonna take a bite. And then we're gonna take a bite. And again, you just wanna keep this doing about nice and even links. So out here towards the tip, out here towards the tip, we are gonna do quarter inch increments or six millimeter increments. And then as we get closer to here, we're gonna start increasing that up to about 10 mil increments. So this way they're segmented properly. So I'm gonna heat that up one more time. This is also a great way of making ram's horns uh, for like the growth rings on ram's horns. You can get this to go a lot closer together if you want. You want pretty sharp guillotine dies to do this with. These are a little too flat or a little too rounded, so they could use to be a lot sharper, but they'll be okay for this demonstration purpose. The sharper the, the, sharper the die, the more uh, exaggerated this effect will become here in the next future heats. So at this point, just doing this repeating pattern on biting it in, butchering in on all four sides is giving us, is really giving us some dimension here that can take and be useful else places. So as you get thicker, you're gonna have to make sure that you chomp in about down to about the same depth and then move it forward. So you're gonna have to hit it a lot more. Maybe one more on that. There we go. And we're gonna do it the other way as well. Get it lined up. Take your time with this and make sure it's lined up. That's the key here. We wanna make sure these are lined up as we go. And then I might go back through some of these and give them little bites here under the cooler parts of the heat just because you can be a little more controlled with it. Don't take this too far. The material doesn't like to move a whole lot when it's cold, so be careful with that. So there we go, we're segmenting that off. I'll continue this again, get a little longer heat on it now, and we'll heat a little further back. So if you're watching this video, I wanna thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this content. And if you would like to support Christ Center Ironworks and what we do here free of charge, hit that like button and share this video around with your friends if you found it helpful. 
send it around on the social media sites and those sort of things. The more people that see these videos, uh, the better it is. It allows us to take and get further reach and continue our mission to educate in blacksmithing here at Christ Center Ironworks. Jessica and I greatly appreciate you. All of our super fans out there and our sponsors, which is you, the viewer. If you watch this, if you watch us on a daily basis and, and you give us your watch time and those subscribes, you are a sponsor of this channel and uh, we greatly appreciate that. Thank you for supporting us in that way. Also, if you'd like to f support us financially, a great way of doing that is checking out our website over at blacksmithpds.com and consider purchasing a set of power hammer plans or maybe an ebook or an ebook bundle on starting and running a blacksmithing business. Uh, you can find the links to that website down in the description down below and just go over there at your earliest convenience and you'll find that in all of our videos. Oh, here we go. Okay, I think that's good enough to take and show for the demonstration so you guys can see how that works. So now comes the next part. We're going to have to go over to the vise for this because we're going to twist this up and that's where the magic will happen. So now that we're at the vise, this is how we're going to work this. I've got the vise preset up to hold 3 8 material or 10 mil square material. I've got that previously set up. I also have my I also have a crescent wrench here just in case we need it. It's just an adjustable wrench. Um, I've got that set up to take and be used as a place that we can stick on there and we can work. And then I've got a pair of scrolling tongs. You don't need the crescent wrench or you don't need the scrolling tongs. I've got them both over here just in case I decide I want them at the moment's notice. So you need one or the other for this process. So we're going to get this, so this is nice and hot, and we are going to work on twisting the largest section first. So we need to take and grip the body into the vise, and then with the pair of scrolling tongs, I'm going to grab a hold of this, and I'm going to twist this in an exact tangent, or roughly on the diamond. Then, by holding that, decide I want to use square, squaring tongs here, we're going to twist this other section back to 90. So you want to take and twist these back and forth, back and forth as we come across here. I'm going to hold this material here and I'm going to twist it again the opposite way at a 90 and those areas that we fullered in become weak points. They become weak points that then can be twisted to great effect. So we're going to hold that and then this Again, keep going 90 to 90, or on a tangent, if you will. That's what we're looking for. I'm going to take a little small wire brush here just to brush this off so you guys can see what's happening. Hopefully you all can see that just fine. Pull it out of the vise here and show you what I'm talking about. So it's going to kind of have this bit of a cube look here. It's on the diagonals, and it's going to give that interesting look if you will, to like a dragon's tail. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this up one more time, and we'll do it again. With twists and with sectional twists like this, get creative. Uh, you know, you never know what you might come up with that, you know, ends up looking really, really cool. and. You, this is another way that you could do, say, if you just chop down, just straight down into it, you could make some dice, do some like twisted, like do a dice twist. Uh, you know, again, this twist, biting in, foolering in in sections that you want to twist more than other sections can be very handy in future projects. I'm hoping with this technique that you guys can take and go out into your shop and you know, experiment and come out with something cool. And who knows, you might invent a new twist, although unlikely, but you never know. Most twists that I think about, I find out 
someone's already done them. Been there, done that. So that's the thing about our craft being, you know, several thousand years old. So again, now I'm gonna twist this, and then I'm gonna hold that, the part that I just twisted, and then I'm gonna twist the other part back to square, and then I'll put it the other one on that diamond, and then you put the other one, and then this last part will have to heat up one more time to really get in there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to heat that up one more time, I think, yeah. I heat that up one more time and just give it a quick brush. So get interesting with this, uh, you know, play around with the twist. I'm just showing you one thing that we're doing. So these are supposed to look uh, more like vertebrae almost in a way when you sight down them they'll look they'll give the impression of vertebrae at a distance if you get up close to them they look more like just a simple cube twist so that's one of the things on larger material this effect is more pronounced it'll look sharper you'll have more like diamond like shapes more like pyramid linked up pyramid shapes and they look a little bit better let's heat this up this last little tip portion up here and then we will straighten out, uh, we will straighten it up a little bit and then do our final little tail bit to show that detail. So get that good and hot. And then we'll straighten the whole thing. And then we'll go to take and actually turning it into something that looks kind of like a tail. And that'll be the fun part when we can go to that part. So I've got this thing almost hot again. Great thing about coal coal heats very quickly and efficiently. So we're going to grab this in the vise one more time. I'm going to grab the piece that I don't want to twist with the, my wrench. Twisting wrench here. And then I'm going to take this piece back to flat. And then last but not least, bend that very last section. This is where having something like this is where having something like a uh, torch will be very handy in your shop. So there we have it. So we got that all twisted up nicely. And now we'll just straighten in the vise by just giving it a squeeze on the diagonals and on the flats. And this will straighten this whole piece up for us. And there we go. So now we've got this piece all straightened up. Let's go over to the anvil. So now that we're at the anvil, you have a couple options here. You can go on and continue to use uh, your scrolling tongs here if you have a pair of scrolling tongs. If you don't have a pair of scrolling tongs, don't worry about it. You could also just make up a simple wooden mallet will work to take and tap this thing around and play with it. Uh, it's really up to your choice sky's the limit. I will say, however, you want to be careful not to do add bite marks or you don't want to have hammer marks and things like that into this piece. Uh, you want to be very careful of that. So use some sort of soft mallet if you can. And now we're just going to take and add the parts of it that will turn it into that extra little bit of creativity. Now after you've added this, as you can see, this is starting to look kind of, this looks a lot neater than what it did just being straight out. You can add this detail to any type of finial you want. We can straighten that up. You can give it a brush. We'll go ahead and heat this up one more time and take it just a little further. I just want to show you guys that. As you can see, you could add that, and that could be just the beginning of a tail that's coming down from a dragon that you're making. I'll go ahead and heat this back up. Also, consequently, this is the same thing as like a bean pod or a bean in type deal. If you make it out of round rod, this same thing can apply, which can look really neat. 
Uh, you'll see that a lot in old Gothic ironwork. You'll see those different types of details kind of thrown in there. They're usually not the main element. They're an accompanying element of a piece of decorative forged work. So again, it's just another neat process. An experiment, have fun with this. Uh, that's the great thing about blacksmithing. I think sometimes as beginners, I know for me, when I was a beginner, I was so focused at trying to be better and better and better and man, I suck and man, this doesn't work out right or oh, man, I wish if, if only I was as skilled as that guy or oh, if only I could do that. And the way that those people that you idolize in your life have gotten so skilled is usually because they have put in the 10,000 repeti repetitions of stuff that you haven't done yet. They have failed a lot. They have put a lot of time in at the anvil, and that time adds up. That time adds up. So when you see something that you watch some guy demonstrate on YouTube or in person at a local blacksmith meet, a club, who knows where you're seeing these demonstrations at, or that particular thing that really catches your eye or your interest, most of these people have been doing this for a very long time and they weren't afraid to try something new and experiment around with things. Even if it doesn't come out quite like you are wanting or as elaborate as you're wanting, you tried something and who knows, maybe you'll come up with something new or some technique that you'll be able to use in some decorative ironwork at a later date. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember that like button and share it around with your friends. As always, God bless you. We'll catch you on the next one.